This channel is for adults and not for kids. Hey guys, thanks for stopping back by. So today I have four Japanese ghost story movies that I wanted to recommend to you guys. These are all really cool movies. And um, this first one, I know I have a, I have a whole um, episode, a whole video dedicated to this movie and the um, SH Figure Arts little Sadako figure that goes along with it. But I don't know if any of you are gonna go back and watch that past episode. So I thought I would mention it now. Um, this is my box set from Arrow for uh, Ring. And Ring came out in 1998. Um, it's by Hideo Nakata. And um, it stars everybody's favorite Sunny Chiba protege, uh, Hiroyuki Sanada. Um, it's also uh, Nanako Matsushima is... Uh, the main woman in this movie her um ex-husband played by Hiroyuki Sanada um has like psychic abilities and um you guys all know what the ring is about um anyway her and her ex-husband the psychic are trying to break the curse and they have seven days to do it before the vengeful ghost of Sadako comes back and um, claims her as her next victim. Um, the movie came out in 98. The first time I saw it was actually on a uh, VHS tape. And um, I, remember, I remember the day I got it and I watched it at nighttime. I put the tape in the, I had no idea what it was about, but um, I ordered it from somebody, uh, did you, maybe you guys, did you used to read, um, Asian cult cinema, that little, like, magazine that talked about Japanese and Chinese movies, somebody in there was selling it, and I got it through him, and I put the videotape in the VCR and watched it back in 98, at nighttime, and I was like, fuck, um, yeah, it was really cool discovering that movie. Um, I love that film. Um, so when I mention um, Ring to people, um, it always comes up with how come how come uh, Japanese ghosts all look the same? How come they all have that long black hair, like you know, long black wet hair down in front of their face? Why, why do they do that? And as I explained in the other video, the reason they do that, um, in Japanese culture, if you go back in history, in Japanese culture, um, men and women had these really intricate um, hairstyles. And your position on the social ladder was reflected in the in the hair that you wore. Uh, if you were a laborer, you wore your hair one way, not the same way as a samurai. Um, and the same with the women. Um, their hairstyle denoted what they did, who they were, and where they were on the social ladder. Um, so a ghost that comes back um, no longer fits into society, no longer fits into the social etiquette, into the social norm. She has let herself go. She's just this free, wild, she's no longer bound by society or culture. She's just like unhinged and it's reflected in the way she looks. So to a Japanese audience, they would, they would pick up on it just like that. And it would be an added like uh, moment for them because to them it meant something, you know? This was no longer someone that followed um, how a proper lady should look, you know what I mean? Um, so when American audiences or English audiences see that, 
they just think that it's like a stylistic choice of, oh, they've got messy, wet hair. But no, it meant something. It means something more to the Japanese. And so that's why you see them all wild and unhinged. It means that they, they're so scary because they no longer fit into what is expected in society. So that's why they show them. That's why they depict them that way. Um, this is this is a really cool movie. This first Ring film is awesome. The sequels are just kind of they're, they're all right, but I got this box set because I really wanted the first one on Blu-ray, and this is an awesome movie. Very good stuff, um, and I'm always a sucker for um, Hiroyuki Sonata. Um, he's just awesome, and yeah, so I highly recommend Ring. Um, next up, this again is from Arrow. I upgraded my DVD. This is Pulse from 2001, um, by Kiyoshi Kurosawa. No, not that Kurosawa. <laughs> the other Kurosawa. And, um, in Japan, the title of this film was Cairo, which literally translates into Circuit. Um, this is an awesome movie. This is a movie all about alienation. Um, it uses ghosts as a metaphor for us as a society, how we're all growing apart from each other. And each of us is kind of isolated in our own little world. We don't connect with others around us especially now with the internet, um, we're all in our own little echo chambers. We're all isolated from each other. There's no like community. Um, and yeah, it uses the ghosts and these people dying off and becoming ghosts as sort of a metaphor for what's going on in, in society. It's very smartly, it's very smart. It's, it's done super well. Um, when you do see the ghosts in this, they're probably even scarier looking than Sadako. Um, they look like shadow people, you know? They're, they're like a, a black outline, like a walking shadow. And the closer, the closer it comes to the camera, the more you can start to pick out um, distinct facial features. This will scare the piss out of you. If you watch this shit at nighttime, this is a good one. Um, yeah, I highly recommend this one. Um, when I got this one, it was, uh, like a bootleg DVD and it, and it said, um, Cairo on it. Um, and then years later I managed to, um, upgrade it from Arrow to this beautiful Blu-ray. If you guys can find this one, I'm not sure if it's out of print, but if you can find a copy of this, get it. Um, not only is it a beautiful metaphor for how fucked up our interpersonal relations are with each other and how we're all growing distant we're all on our own little deserted island but besides all that it's just a beautiful scary ghost story so if you don't want to read into it any deeper than the surface level it works that way too it's just a spooky ass ghost movie that if you care enough to look deeper into it has more of a punch when you realize what the director is actually saying. Um, okay, this next one, this is, this is an awesome uh, classic movie by Masaki Kobayashi. This is Quite On. This little monk is getting covered with um, holy script written all over his body to camouflage him, to make him invisible to the ghosts. Um, Quite On came out in 64. I upgraded this one to a Blu-ray. This is an anthology movie. It has like f four or five ghost stories in it. Oh man, this one is awesome. This film, um, 
this film is not only scary, but it's it's beautiful to look at. The cinematography is gorgeous. Um, it's very surreal. My favorite story in this one is um, about uh, Yukiona, the snow woman. Um, and they have these surrealistic looking sets where the skies are painted with like these giant eyeballs and it's very trippy and surreal it's scary and beautiful at the same time um yeah quite on which literally translates into ghost stories um yeah it's very good stuff this one um this is the best film in the bunch. This is a classic. Um, yeah, but it's an anthology movie. And uh, I mean, yeah, an, an anthology film that has like four or five little segments, little movies in it. And it's super enjoyable, scary and beautiful at the same time. Highly recommend it. Um, so my favorite story in this one, like I said, is uh, the story of the snow woman. And um, if you guys have ever seen that, uh, you remember that Tales, Tales from the Crypt movie um, that had like Ray Don Chong starring as like this, uh, she was like this gargoyle monster and um, she attacks some dude and she says she'll let him live if he doesn't tell anybody her secret. And then shortly after he finds this good looking girl and hooks up with her, only down the line, he tells her about the monster he discovered and she changes back into her monster form. That's from this. They took that story beat for beat from the legend of the snow woman. Um, it's my favorite story in this one, which is basically um, the woman of the snow the snow woman she's this ghost who um feeds off of people kind of like a vampire but instead of draining well i guess she does drain them of their blood yeah okay so she's like a, a japanese vampire and she sucks the life from people she's about to kill this good looking younger man and um she says i'll spare you if you promise never to tell my secret so he's, he agrees. He's like, I won't tell anybody. Um, shortly thereafter, he meets this hot chick, which is the same actress. Um, and they get married and they have kids and they live happily ever after until one day he fucks up and he tells her, you know, Oh, when I'm looking at you just now, the way the light's hitting your face, you reminded me of something. She like stops. She knows what he's about to say. She's like, oh yeah, of what? So he fucks up and tells her. And of course she re reverts back to her evil, monstrous self. I won't ruin the ending, but um, it is so good. It's a great story. Um, yeah, so that's my favorite one of Kwai Don, um, which was 64. Um, four years later, in 68, um, this movie came out. This is Kwai Don Yukijoro from 1968. Um, to Tokuza Tanaka. Um, it's just a longer version of that story. So this is an entire movie devoted to her story. And um, man, when she reverts to her ghostly self, they give her these gold, you can't really tell by that picture, but her eyes, they're, they're like gold, like shiny gold color with little black pupils and her skin is as white as snow. She looks freaky as hell. She, I mean, it's a beautiful actress, but she looks scary as hell when you see her transform. Um, and anyway, this is a, an entire movie based on that story.
And this is a good one too. So if you get a taste for that story from this, you would definitely like this. It's a longer version of the same story. And this is a famous Japanese ghost story. It's been told, I don't know how many times in TV shows, Japanese TV shows and different Japanese movies. You can find, you know, lots of versions of this story. But these are my two favorite versions of it. This one is a classic. This is... When I was first getting my toes wet in Japanese cinema, um, uh, you know, I, I don't mean Godzilla. I mean, like, after that. So probably around sometime in junior high, um, I think was the first time I saw like Seven Samurai and I started to <laughs> started to really get into uh, Toshiro Mifune and um, Kurosawa's films and I started watching a lot of Japanese cinema besides Kaiju. That was one of the first ones that I I remember seeing. My big brother introduced me to that one and I was floored by it. I was like, how can something so beautiful be so scary, you know? Or how can something so scary look so beautiful? Um, yeah, that, that Quite On is an amazing movie. Like I said, that's the best one out of the bunch. But um, they're all really enjoyable movies. Um, I had a bigger stack that I was going to show you guys, but I thought I would just leave it at four films right now. Because I've probably been talking for like 20 minutes already. Um, I have a lot more um, Japanese ghost movies. I have a huge Japanese um, cinema collection. But I just thought I was in the mood for Japanese ghost stories um, today. So I thought I would share some of those with you guys. Um, I also have... Um, a healthy amount of Chinese cinema too. So if you guys want to see any um, like Chinese ghost stories or Chinese horror movies or Kung Fu stuff, hit me up and we can talk about those too. Chinese ghosts are a lot different than Japanese ghosts. Um, Chinese ghosts hop like a bunny rabbit. Um, and they can only <laughs> they can only move at right angles. <laughs> if they're coming at you like this and then you you go right, they you know, they can't like walk like a normal person. They make right angle turns. <laughs> um and they're more like hopping vampires. But that's a discussion for another day. So let me know if you guys have seen any of these films. I know you guys have at least seen Ring. I mean, that movie got pretty popular, especially after they they made that silly American remake with the CGI Sadako. Um, yeah, so there's four recommendations. Let me know if you guys are into that type of thing, and I will talk to you guys later. Okay.